Hi, welcome to the Get 800 channel, the only place you need to be for SAT math hints, tips, and tactics. Everything you need is right here so that you won't have to worry about your SAT math score when it comes time to apply to your first choice college. In this video, I'd like to show you how to stop making careless errors in SAT math. Before we can put an end to careless errors, we need to discuss what a careless error actually is. If you look up the definition of careless, you'll get something like not giving enough attention and thought to what you are doing. So most people would say that a careless error is one that could have easily been prevented if only they had paid a bit more attention to what they were doing. But on the SAT, this is only one of the types of errors that students call careless. In fact, it is very common for students to say, my SAT math score would have been this many points higher if only I didn't make so many careless errors. How can it be that so many students are making so many careless errors on the SAT? The answer is that most of the time, students are referring to errors as careless, even though these errors do not fit the actual definition of the word careless. Most of these errors are not careless at all. These are usually mistakes that the student made because he or she was tricked by the question. SAT math questions are intentionally designed to be tricky. The underlying math, however, is usually so simple that when the student sees the correct answer, he or she immediately understands what was done wrong. The student then mistakenly dismisses the mistake as a careless error. In other words, students very often mistake understanding their error quickly for having made a careless error. This can lead to bad preparation. In a sense, the student is tricked twice. The first time is when they're tricked into getting the question wrong. The second time they are tricked into believing that they only got the question wrong because they weren't being careful enough. The first trap is not that big a deal. It can easily be fixed by redoing that problem periodically until the student can get the answer right on their own. But the second trap is much worse. If a student falls into this trap, then they're tricked into never trying that problem again. If a similar type of problem comes up on the SAT, they may very well just get tricked again. So for the purposes of this video, there are two kinds of careless errors. Errors made due to lack of focus and attention, and errors made because of being tricked. So as we go through the following list, keep in mind that I am teaching you how to minimize both of these types of errors. So first, you need to stop brushing. One of the main reasons that students make careless errors on SAT math problems is that they are too worried about getting to the end of the section, so they're not really focusing on the problem that's right in front of them. Don't worry about getting to the end of the section. Do each problem carefully, and even take a little time to check over your answer before you move on. You should never answer a question quickly just to get to the next question. Your speed will increase naturally as you practice and learn SAT-specific math strategies. Second, try not to get hung up on one question. Getting hung up on one SAT math question could lead to rushing, which in turn leads to careless errors. The solution is quite simple. Always be aware of when you have spent about 30 seconds on a question. At that point, you should decide if you can get the answer within the next 45 seconds or so. If so, then finish the problem. If not, mark it off and move on. Don't worry, you didn't forget about it. You can still come back to it later. And when you come back to it, you'll still remember the work that you have done so that none of your time has been wasted. Third, make sure that you learn some SAT specific math strategies. The more strategies that you know, the less likely you'll be to make careless errors. Using strategies will ensure that you do not get tricked. Practice using these strategies as often as possible before test day so that you can use them quickly and effortlessly when you take your SAT. Fourth, Practice solving problems in several different ways. 
The more ways that you can solve a problem, the easier it will be for you to avoid falling into any traps that have been set for you. When practicing, I recommend trying to solve every practice problem in up to four ways. Using an SAT-specific strategy, the quickest way you can think of, the way you would do it in school, and the easiest way for you. During the actual exam, you should try to solve each SAT math problem using one method, and then use a second method later on when checking over your answer. Fifth, practice for 10 to 20 minutes each day. If you're studying effectively, the number of careless errors you make should continually be decreasing. Make sure that you periodically keep redoing problems that you get wrong in addition to attempting new problems. Sixth, do not dismiss errors as careless when practicing. Anytime you get a problem wrong, make sure you mark it off and reattempt it again in another week or so. It does not matter why you got this problem wrong. A mistake that many students make is to say it was just a careless error, it won't happen again, and then to never look at the problem again. The reality of the situation is that you may very well keep making the same careless error because you may fall into the same trap. So don't just assume you will get the problem correct next time you attempt it. Wait a few days, then reattempt the problem again, and you will see firsthand whether you get it right or wrong. If you still get it wrong, attempt it again in another few days or week. Repeat until you can get it right on your own. It is actually important that you wait at least a few days before reattempting a problem that you get wrong. You want to give yourself a chance to forget the exact nature of that specific problem. This will ensure that you are actually solving the problem and not just recalling the solution. Redoing problems you get wrong is extremely important, more important than attempting new problems. This is what separates students that show dramatic improvement from students that show only average improvement. Remember, you learn from your mistakes, not your successes. Seventh, make sure that you have answered what the problem was asking for. For example, was the problem asking you to find x, or was it asking you to find 3x? Are they asking for a quotient or a remainder? After you get your answer, always make sure you look back at the question and see exactly what they are asking for. Eighth, do not go with your instinct on hard questions. The more difficult SAT math questions are specifically designed to trick you. This means that if you go with your first instinct on these questions, you are probably falling right into the trap that was laid out for you. On the higher numbered math questions on the SAT, you should actually eliminate a choice if your intuition leads you to that answer too quickly. If you have a proper justification for why that particular answer is correct, then of course you can choose that answer. Otherwise, you should take a guess from the other choices. Ninth, check your answers the correct way. If you are pacing yourself properly during the exam, you should wind up with five minutes or so to check over your answers. So what's the best way to do this? Do not simply look over your work. You need to start the test over and redo each question from the beginning without looking at your prior work. Ideally, you should try to use a different method than you used the first time. For example, if you picked numbers the first time, then maybe you want to try to do it algebraically the second time, or at least pick different numbers. If you can't think of a different way to solve it, that's okay. Just do it again, and then compare your two answers. If they're the same, move on. If not, then take a little time to catch your careless mistake. And tenth, use your calculator effectively. Your calculator should be used to save time not to waste time. You don't want to be typing away on your calculator for every single question. If you're doing this, you're probably wasting time. Your calculator is a tool that is there for you to speed up computations. It is not there to solve the problem for you. 
if you're taking the test right, you shouldn't be using your calculator all that much. That said, make sure you do use your calculator for arithmetical computations. This is usually quicker than doing computations by hand or in your head, and you are less likely to make a careless error. Finally, make sure that you know how to input things into your calculator correctly. Many students mess up their order of operations when using calculators, especially using parentheses correctly. Remember that as a general rule, numerators, denominators, and exponents should all be in parentheses when using your calculator. To summarize, if you want to avoid careless errors, make sure that you stop rushing, you don't get hung up on any single question, when practicing, you learn as many SAT math strategies as possible, practice solving problems in different ways, practice every day for 10 to 20 minutes, and please do not dismiss errors as careless as you're practicing. When taking the test, make sure that you have answered what the question was asking for, and don't go at your instinct on hard questions. And of course, make sure that you check over your answers the correct way and use your calculator effectively. I realize that there is a lot of information to absorb in this video, so make sure you rewatch it until you internalize all of the information presented here. If you prefer to read the information that is in this video rather than watch the video again, you can read the article. The URL is below in the description.